Oh, hello. Uh, we are live. What's up, All right. Everyone? Hello, hello. What's up? Welcome once again. Another Creatures and Corridors live stream. If you're catching us on YouTube, hello, YouTube. And uh, we're going to, we're back. Look at that. Two weeks. We didn't take a year off this time. Imagine that. <laughs> Imp impossible. <laughs> Professional levels increasing. And <laughs> and uh, in case you can't tell, we are joined by our good friend Jama today. He is, um, we're like in a o Oreo today, and um, <laughs> so we're gonna be having uh, having a little conversation with him. Sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> I just looked at the, I just looked at the stream, and I, I was like, okay. I didn't plan this, point. but <laughs> I'll be here going anytime. <laughs> So uh, uh, we are joined uh, today by him, and uh, yeah, so we're going to, today, um, we're going to talk about a variety of things, but uh, mostly we're going to uh, kind of delve in, dig into his character a little bit that he plays on our stream, the uh, Star Wars 5e campaign that we've been playing for about a year, year and a half now, and just, uh, yeah, hopefully we're going to make this series, get some of the other guys on to talk a bit about their characters. I know we haven't um, talked to Kyle about his yet, but I was thinking maybe you know, save him for last or I don't know, whenever we can't get a hold of someone else. So uh, when the time is right, when the time is right. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so we're gonna talk about that. And then uh, of course uh, we're gonna talk about, you know, there's lots of exciting stuff around the corner and TV, movies, comics, video games, all that good stuff. And um, also what we've been uh, getting into well, we're not streaming. Lots of lots of interesting stuff. Now, uh, before we get going here, just want to remind you, if you haven't already, go ahead and give us a follow on Twitch. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Tell your friends. It's a lot more fun when there's more people to share it with, you know? And, um, yeah. Uh, now, Jama, uh, you said you had something you wanted to talk about uh, as we were getting ready to get started here. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know. Do you guys know about Logan Paul's podcast, Impulsive? I know of it. No, so, like, I haven't really watched it. I'm, I'm sure, like, you guys have heard of Bobby Lee, the comedian. He's probably, like, the best Asian-American comic that's out oh. right now. He's oh. excellent. So, He's so funny. <laughs> like, he, he has that kind of sense of humor where he'll take any situation and make it funny like you could be talking about your mom who's on her deathbed and he'll be like oh that's rough those bed sores must be terrible like <laughs> <laughs> like he just he takes the piss out of everything and makes everything into a joke and so they invited him on the podcast as you know like logan paul there's like the two dedicated mics and then there's always a third mic that's in rotation okay. and the third mic in rotation now is a guy named george and George is like making this attempt at being like a stand-up comedian and sort of as like a, you know, soft introduction to the comedic world, Bobby sort of takes a bunch of soft jabs at him throughout the entire podcast. Yeah, sure. And like, I, I think it's just a given that if you're in the comedy world, you should have a little bit of a thick skin on you. And I think, so like, I think Rogan calls that verbal sparring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just I always it's thought that floating. was a good term. <laughs> it's a great term. It's just floating around, you know, busting your homies' balls. Yeah. Shit, like, as a kid, the things I said to my friends, like, we made each other cry all the time. But, like, we're still <laughs> friends at the end of the day. So, it's not a real fight. It's just, you know, testing their, testing their guard. Yeah, you know, you're just fucking around, you know, busting right. each other's balls. And so... <laughs> George goes on this really long-winded, like, thing, talking about how hard his life was and everything. And then, of course, Bobby's just like, are you done? Are you finished? I thought we should just lighten the mood. Like, <laughs> and, like... <laughs> and then oh, a few man. jokes later, and George leaves the show. So, like, my question to you guys is... Why, why is it that people can dish it, but they can't take it? Like, what is with that? Like, that's such a poor, it's such a poor vibe. And I wouldn't be surprised if George isn't the third mic after that, in my <laughs> opinion. Like, if you're the desert, if you're the resonant comedian and you can't take a joke, it just makes everyone look bad. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, Kyle, you want to answer first? Oh, man. You don't want to know my opinions on comedy. I say... <laughs> 
get, get good scrub like you know if you're gonna have a, prof- <laughs> if you're gonna have a professional comedian there like you know just 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 snap back bro it doesn't have to be funny just don't be exactly close. it doesn't have to be funny just talk your shit yeah exactly it's- i mean my 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 personal take is that i feel like there's a time and a place you know and that's mm. certainly the time and the place <laughs> is like they're they're entertainers and podcasts are supposed to be entertaining so i don't see why that would be inappropriate like if they were talking about like some like really like heavy topics or you know like like a war cancer or some shit like the yeah i could understand that being like kind of inappropriate but if they're just fucking around and having a good time then if you're if you're a bunch of if you're a bunch of comedians then there's really nothing off limits even war cancer yeah for sure that's true true. i've watched two bears in a cave what's it called when it comes to comedy like (laughs) nothing is supposed to be off limits including each other especially each other you know I don't know. I don't know what a good like comeback would have been in that such a situation, but you know, think of something, come back, or just like, or just Bobby laugh it Lee off and even. just like take it and worry about it later and cry about it later. Yeah, like he even makes fun of his own like he's a sexual assault survivor and he makes jokes about that all the time, and but it's like the way he tells the story is what makes it funny. Like he's like, I was brutally molested by an autistic man. And then, like, he just waits because he knows you're like, that's fucked up. So he sees the smile and he goes, you're awful. And then you laugh about it. And then he's like, I'm going to tell the story and you're not going to laugh. And then you're trying really hard not to laugh. And he goes, I was horrifically, brutally molested by an autistic man. And it's just like, he knows what he's doing. He's selling it. And it's like, he, he if he masks everything in humor, I don't know, like... If he's the kind of guy that does that, you can't come to him with your woes and not expect him to roast you. Yeah. That's how he deals with his feelings. Like, yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. I know. I know. Definitely got to know always... what, what kind of podcast you're on. I, I had a coworker <laughs> who, like, she dealt with her uh, her trauma through humor, and and some of some of the trauma I knew about, and so sometimes I would just casually just like roast like her situation if you will and mm-hmm. then she'd laugh about it um and it was felt borderline inappropriate but you know at the same time it was a coping, <laughs> a coping mech- <laughs> it was funny and it was a coping and it was definitely a little bit of a coping method because she'd, she'd also make the same jokes about it in like her own way, way as well so it wasn't like um, i think it was all in good faith and good trust but it's just, you got a good rapport with the yeah. person you got or that exactly and comedians rapport. especially like that's literally their whole shtick is like hey humor is my <laughs> humor isn't like just my coping mesel but it's also the way i communicate um mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so you know take it dish it laugh about it you know even even in, even in the creatures and corridors channel we're constantly roasting each other and kissing each other so you know or anthony <laughs> he breathes when they attack him <laughs> you know, we all get pretty savage sometimes but it's all in good fun we all love each other so. all, exactly. exactly all right well that was interesting uh so i guess we're gonna go ahead and move on to the main the main subject for today jama Let's talk. Uh, let's talk your character. So, yeah, sure. we'll start. Um, uh, Brennan Boldgrave, Bloodline, a man that goes by many names. <laughs> um, now, this this wasn't your original character. We started the campaign with when we started the character. You're playing someone entirely different who has made a couple of cameos here and there. Uh, but I believe, if I if memory serves, the first session that we streamed was actually kind of the changing of the guard. You uh, you and Kyle both switched characters because you wanted to play something with a little more, uh, a little more RP meat, I guess. Um, so yeah, I just want to start with like, how did you come up with the character, like creating it, and what were your like influences? So when I first thought of like. Old grave i like initially i was like i wanted to play a character who is troubled but appropriately on brand with what we opened with he deals everything he deals with everything with humor and he kind of like hides everything inside of like 
his obvious flaws. Like, he uses his obvious flaws as, like, a mask for everything else. So the fact that he's an alcoholic, he wears, like, a badge of honor, and he kind of advertises that. He lets everyone know. So that way there's this preconceived notion about him every time he goes anywhere. And that's kind of, like, his secret identity. And that's, like, kind of what I was going for when I was developing. It was, like, I want this character who's a spy. Like, he's a pirate and a spy. But, like, I don't <clears throat> want it to be, like, oh, like, he's just, like, your arg matey or your, your traditional edge boy. I wanted someone who had layers. And the best way to do that is to for expectation. So by making him a <laughs> raging alcoholic with... <laughs> with daddy issues <laughs> I, was, I was able to fit a lot under that blanket <laughs> well i'll tell you the the you know being the alcoholic and kind of seeming like a, a hot mess uh on the outside definitely is very like disarming especially to most of the npcs that i portray you know because they just they immediately are just like oh this guy you know doesn't have his shit together like he's nothing to be worried about and then Turns out he's the one we should be the most worried about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah uh, like... so were there any like um, specific like characters or like movies, TV, you know, books, whatever that you like drew on for that character? Um, so personality wise, a lot of Old Graves inspiration came from like. I would say, like, myself. Like, a large part of Boldgrave's personality is what eight-year-old me would have thought was very cool. <laughs> and so, like, that's, like, the idea is, like, he, he's someone who never got the chance to grow up. So he's pretending to be who I, he thinks someone who is cool and capable and in control should be and he's been doing it for so long that that's become his personality um as far as like the physical design of the character the monochromatic eyes are something i really liked about uh Tyrion lannister from game of thrones and so because that's a feature that's in the book I really like the idea of having a character with monochromatic eyes, given how important eye color is in the Star Wars universe, especially when you're dealing with, like, the Force and such. And so I was like, it'd be an interesting thing to apply to the character. And then as far as the, the hair being, like, gray, like, gray-black, it's because he is, like, 44. He's, he's not young. And... Oh. And it's like, he's lived a whole life, and most of his hair color changes due to stress. The way he cuts it with the sides shaved off is because it's like, part of, he's holding on to his um, monastic kind of um, monastery roots with the Order of the Dog. They always kept their sides of their heads shaved. And so he does that, but he also grows the top out much longer than it should be because he's, of course, has to rebel against his <laughs> his conformity. Try to um, kind of balance tradition with, you know, expressing exactly. himself. He is someone who can't let go of where he comes from, but also someone who doesn't want to be tied down. So <laughs> he is in constant conflict with his own wants and uh, desires. As far as the, like design of his like outfit with like the cross belts and the tunic and like the really sick looking like kind of like sleek uh leather full leather pants like i was going for like star wars meets like a futuristic almost akira style cyberpunk like i wanted it to be form-fitting and fluid to someone who would be doing all the acrobatics and very like dexterous things that bold group does but I also wanted it to look like, oh, this is a guy that gets shot at. Like, so <laughs> I wanted him to have a mix of practicality and fluidity. And that's where the designs come from. And then again, the black and the white color scheme is A, it allows him to blend into almost any like situation because it comes across as both formal and casual. And it also lets him uh, assume who he needs to be. Um, 
as like whatever identity he's trying to betray when he's sneaking around and stuff. Black Real quick, lean uh, yeah. lean to the side. Let it, let's take take a little look at that picture behind you. That's beautiful, beautiful. Shout out to the guy San who did all our art. Santac, yeah, he's What's great. What's his name? Santac. We can Santac. actually like, okay. Yeah, we can leave a link in the uh, video. But yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's good... great. He's done all the he's art excellent. for our uh, for our player characters at least. Yeah, he's excellent. He's good stuff. Um, and the black and white again is like a a sort of a call back to the whole balance thing. Because Star Wars is all about balance. I wanted that to kind of ring through and echo in Brennan's character. Even though he acts a bit unbalanced most oh, of the all time. The time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. You He's can't have on. balance without <laughs> unbalance. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a process, for sure. Um, I One thing that you said that I, I definitely kind of latched on to, um, but you, you brought up Tyrion and um, about like kind of wearing your flaws as a suit of a suit of armor, so to speak. Um, I've always thought that was such like the, that was kind of the moment that I really just loved Tyrion and at least in the show, uh, I haven't read the books, but um, the um, yeah, it just, it just really kind of reminded me of that whole, like, you know, never forget what you are bastard. Yeah. They can never hurt you. <laughs> Definitely felt very, uh, very similar to that whole mantra <laughs> yeah george r. r martin's character designs as far as like their uh personality and their roots and stuff like that are all so solid that i probably definitely unintentionally pulled a lot from that um because i do love like the way martin's world building is and the way he builds his people they just feel very fleshed out so i uh, you know as like creators you just absorb things sometimes you don't even notice it yeah. well, that's, oh, that's why he went from like I. five books to nine books now if we ever get it he's, <laughs> he's like i'm just writing my characters yeah. and what happens happens like, i don't know <laughs> listen i'm a dm you don't have to tell me about absorbing <laughs> characters and <laughs> i i put all kinds of references some some of which are very obvious some of which may be more subtle but i absolutely put all kinds of reference and Easter egg and stuff into my world. Good times, good times. So I guess um, the next thing we could talk about was um, like when you you know when you go to role play the character, like kind of what's your what's your mindset or like where do you kind of take your take your headspace to uh, to get into that feel? Because you really have a very like I can I can see the shift happen like when we start streaming. Like I see you kind of go from being Jama to being Goldgrave. Like, I, I do see a, a noticeable shift. Um, I appreciate that. that. That means a lot. Um, the, the whole head change is just like, I don't know, for me, because I do have like a theatrical background. Uh, I did a lot of theater stuff in school and I like also do, do a lot of like, I was a filthy weave in, in RP forms for a long time. Theater kids so, represent. We would have been good know. friends in school. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and like so because of that like it's easy for me to play pretend um uh as far as like what it really is is if you want to go to the, the net grid of it it's me just straight up disassociating <laughs> <laughs> pretending to be someone else Every like, actor I'm ever. Just like yeah I just some like... might call that a flow state but okay <laughs> <laughs> so i just said <laughs> I'm just kind of like, yeah, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm just going to be this guy for the next <laughs> few hours. And that's kind of how it plays out. But as far as, like, the way I make my decisions as Boldgrave and everything like that, it's it's not always what would Boldgrave do. Mm -hmm. It's what would Boldgrave impulse. Because Boldgrave thinks he would do something but he doesn't always do what he would think he would do just like how real people act like when you're in a situation you're like i'd keep it cool i wouldn't do that and then the next thing you know you get rear-ended and you're cussing this person out that you've never met before <laughs> so like bold grave would probably be the person rear-ending <laughs> and <laughs> and he'd say i'd never crash this speeder and then he crashes the speeder and then it's he what he would say he would do is he would punch the person in the face if they talk back to him what he would actually do is he'd try to be diplomatic about it 
and be like, come on, come on, it's not that serious, we don't have to do this, come on, just like, I'll throw you some credits, get back in the car, like... <laughs> <laughs> and I and I love the voice too. It's I know it's it's certainly not a requirement for role playing, but it really it really does, you know, take it to that next level of immersion. I feel like that's, that's just years of alcoholism damaged his vocal cords. <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> it's always what I think of. I was just like, this guy just sounds like he woke up from a bender every time you talk. <laughs> he always has it's a fog in his throat. He always has a fog in his cold throat. But he does change his voice sometimes, like when he's trying to pretend to be other people. He does change his voice, and you'll you'll hear it sometimes. Like, uh, I think it was like the third session when we were on Curson, we had to get the Endelin out of Vimpound. Um, the third Captain Captain session. Major Sergeant Boldgrave. Was yeah, that yeah, one? whatever it was. <laughs> But uh, I went from being like this to being like, hello, you understand you're outranked. Like, a little more, like, <laughs> formal and um, no, no, was Because he slurs a lot when he talks. He doesn't even know where his mouth is going. It just gets there. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. I, yeah, I, 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 I enjoy watching Bulgrave. Bulgrave's great because he's like a disaster, but he's like the ultimate spy at the same time. So it's just like he's so, he's so, he's so the he, world's greatest spy. Yeah, he's he's like I don't know. Uh, he's like the worst. It's James like organized Bond. chaos. Yeah. It's just like focused chaos. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Because obviously he's good at um, obviously he's good at what he does. Otherwise he wouldn't be where he's at. Yeah, it's a mix of professionalism and instincts, right? Like it's like re like repetitive behavior. Once you do something enough times. You get good at it like you know uh it's just him going back to his monk roots of being like okay well these are your forms you do your forms over and over and over again you get good at them and so for him repetition and habits and things these are things that give him comfort so he constantly returns to them so i i think even if he wasn't an adventurer he'd still be a criminal because the process is the same all the time you case the joint you rob the place you evade the police you move your planet and it's like that sort of repetition would be something that grounds him, even though it's chaotic. It's like his uh, his foundation. You know, order is just a cross section of chaos we get comfortable with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ooh, that's a spicy, uh, spicy little nugget there. I like that. <laughs> Could I ask you something, Russell? Of course. Um, when we had the whole. What is it? What's her name? The the madam? What's her name? The mistress. The mistress. When when Boldgrave was in the massage parlor and we had that whole long interaction between the two characters, that was probably the best role playing I'd had with you as a DM to a player in like a really long time. And I feel like we were both just flying by the seat of our pants because like I didn't expect to roll, like, three natural 20s. I didn't expect <laughs> to succeed your fucking, uh, what was it? Uh, I think you tried to charm me. I passed that. It was, like, everything we tried to do to manipulate each other didn't work, and then we just stopped trying to manipulate each other. <laughs> and it was just like, look, you got, well, let's just have a conversation, because this clearly isn't going anywhere. <laughs> They were both, like, fucking, like, posturing and, like, trying to, like, you know, get inside each other's heads. And yeah, they're, they're like, okay, let's just drop all that and just talk. <laughs> it's it's verbal <laughs> sparring. It's verbal sparring, just like we talked about earlier. Yeah. Yes, yes. That was, yeah, that was definitely a total situation of I had no fucking clue what I was uh. doing. But <laughs> I, I, I kind of, like you were saying about disassociating, I... I, I don't I don't quite do the voice as much as I probably should. Um, I know some DMs are very like very good about that. I I don't know. I I always think of Harmon Quest. I don't know if anyone's watched that, but the yeah, DM literally does the exact same voice for every character, but like still like you know acts as the character would act. So anyways, yeah, I, I always yeah. thought that was like a funny little bit that they did. But um but yeah I I kind of do I kind of just like try to like put myself in that headspace and just not really like i'm just i just kind of become that character and think as they would think and talk as they would talk as much as i can um which i guess that's all 
acting and role playing really is. But um, yeah, I was just like, what what does she want out of this scene? Like, what's her goals? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, and and how is she reacting to the new information that you bring to the table? Like, how how would she respond to those kind of things? Um, but yeah, that was that was a. I'll tell you, I was pretty nervous in the moment. Looking back, I, everything went fine, but I was just I'm like, oh, God. Too, like, am I going to get fried right now? Yeah. <laughs> like, am I going to have to kill this motherfucker? I was just like, am I going to get ended right now by this, like, level 12 character? Like, what's about to happen? <laughs> and, like, so, and then, like, what really made Boldgrave be confident in that moment was when we went into the office, and then it was sort of like that, natural 20 perception check happens i see all the traps in the room and then I'm, and then it turned into like okay this is even playing ground because those things can go either way and i see everything you know where everything is and i'm gonna let you know i know so you don't think you like it's still a stalemate <laughs> and then you know seating myself in the chair without being offered it and sort of just like continuing the conversation like it was just so nice. It was so nice. Such a good episode. Go check it out if you haven't watched it yet. But, like, it was very good. That was, uh, I think, two episodes back? Three episodes back? Uh, I feel like it was, episodes, like, yeah. four or five by now, but I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm sure it feels one? like that, but... Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's... I don't know. Let's go, let's go watch the whole series. I mean, if you haven't watched it by now, what are you doing here? <laughs> go start at the beginning. Um, what's up, Django Markov? Hello name it's very uh star wars and mtg <laughs> um yeah so um yeah, there's definitely been a lot of like shining moments for bold grave too you really know how to kind of make a scene like a lot of times you kind of will just blend in and and just let the others kind of lead the show and then every now and then you just pop up and really like you're good at like really just kind of taking that spotlight and having a moment there's certainly multiple like scenes that I can just picture so clearly, you know, the whole thing with like his dad, that whole like situation. I mean, that whole fight was ridiculous, but especially just like in that room, I can just picture it so clearly. Um, the whole pouring out your flash thing before that too. I thought that was a really nice just, like you. movie yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah. I think that I try to make a lot of movie moments. I, I think a lot of the things bold grave does are things I've seen in films that I like, and I just want my character to have that moment. Um, there is one scene in particular that keeps coming back to my mind, and it's like, uh, I know it's something that no one else probably remembers or thinks about, but it's the, uh, when we were in the nightclub and we absolutely obliterated everything inside of it back on Coruscant. Oh yeah, like the so, fucking very beginning. <laughs> yeah, like, do you guys remember how, like, I, like, absolutely just dwindled that bartender? Like, how I hopped over the counter because I knocked something over. He didn't see me knock it over, and I, like, pretended to help him clean it up. And then I was, like, helping him get something off the top shelf while I was also pit-pocketing him. And then I knocked everything off of the shelf so he wouldn't notice that I pit-pocketed him. <laughs> and then, like, I hopped back over and was just like, sorry, I'm super drunk. And then, like, <laughs> left one credit and took two bottles. <laughs> like, and I was like, man, I was, it was at that point that I was like, this is exactly who he is. He just comes in and makes people think that their life is going to be so much better because he's in it. And then it instantly gets worse. <laughs> and, he, and he comes out with a much better option than he went into your life with. Like, that's, like, his character in a nutshell. It's just like it's sharing his chaos. <laughs> <laughs> the mis the art of misdirection, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, you guys really tore up several nightclubs and uh what? I'm currently, Actually, currently tearing up another on. one. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. was gonna say, man, it's starting to become a uh, a revolving well, uh, theme here. What's it called? Nightlife a lot of criminal underground. A lot of criminal underground happens in nightclubs. At least you know in movies. Um, <laughs> and so. And hey, it's the best D and D story starting a tavern. I I stand by that adage. That's super true. Honestly, like you can start any one shot in a tavern. 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's really nice. You know, this is kind of off topic, but I know when I started my one shot, which turned into a campaign in the tavern, I like had everybody like roll initiative and they just all enter the, ca- the tavern at different times. So they all get like two to three minutes of small role play before like the next person. Oh, that's came nice. In. That's actually a really good idea. And, um, and so, so, but they were all there for like, quote unquote, the same reason. Cause it was a one shot, you know, uh, to, you know, complete the quest to make the money. But, um, but it was just a nice little, uh, you know, everybody starts in the tavern, but it didn't feel like tropey. It just felt natural. At least mm-hmm. I think it felt natural. I guess mm-hmm. you'd have to ask Russ if he remembers. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I thought it was great. I, I think the like the biggest pitfall that DMs will run into with the tavern scenario is they they don't provide anything for the players to latch on to like proactively. And now you guys, I can just put you in a room and you'll start role playing. Like it, it doesn't take much to. You guys don't really like need much uh, stimuli to to get going. But I think a lot of DMs are like, okay, you're in a tavern, and and that's all they give them. And you're just like, okay, what? Well, like I guess I order a drink. That's also mm-hmm. kind of like at the same time, I think it's a good like sink or swim because it's like, well, here you are. Like, what what do you what would you do? Like what like you. That's true. You start kind of, that's a good way to like start pushing the boundaries of like, well, you can do anything. You can order a drink, you can order food, you can stay the night, you can start a bar fight, like you, <laughs> you can hit on the waitress. Like there's t- tons of things you can do yeah. in that scenario. So um, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I just, I think, I think it's such a peak D and D scenario. I, I forever is. will stand the. Tavern. <laughs> it's a tavern. Yep, it's a trope for. Yeah, reason. I like. That's like, I think just like the, you can do anything is like, that's what draws me to like D and D in general. Like, uh, I, I can't, it's weird for me as like 30 year old now, but it's like when I was a kid, <laughs> I know, I know. Wait, that's illegal. <laughs> The old men. <laughs> me in the crypt. But it's like, it's weird for me as like a 30 year old guy who grew up playing video games and everything and always being on the railroads. And then I hit my mid twenties and I get this agency with D and D. And then like, it's not like I stopped liking video games, but my love for video games definitely fell off because of my love for D and D. And I find myself playing almost exclusively games where I have total fucking agency because like I'm spoiled by D and D like I'll start playing an MMO and it's like, I don't feel like I have the same impact that I do on this world as I do in D and D because the story is not really about me, even though the narrative tells me it is. So it's like, I would almost rather play a single player game and RPG instead of playing an MMO just because, like, I want to feel that same sense of importance. And, that, I, like, D&D does that, you know? It gives you unlimited options, and it makes you feel good about the choices you make. Yeah, yeah even even the best open-world sandbox-type games still have barriers and limits. Exactly. And, and yeah. D&D does have, technically, has barriers and limits. I mean, there. I was just talking with Kyle earlier about, you know, there are some genres that just don't work quite as well in D and D, but in general, uh, what you said about agency is absolutely true. I, I think, you know, obviously there's some rule zero, you know, session zero type things that have to be discussed ahead of time. But once that's like, once that's those that are point. cleared. Yeah. And those are like pretty like kind of like common sense. Most, of the, don't time. most of the time, a federal offense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't like, uh, don't make anyone uncomfortable. Don't um, make the FBI be the only one watching the stream. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on. It depends if they're donating to the stream or not. That's the most important part. Oh, right? yeah. come on, <laughs> girl of investigation. It's right there. It's right there. But yeah, you you can you you are you are only bound by your own imagination at that point. Yeah. That's so true. I I completely agree. It's it's a beautiful thing. It's part of why I love DMing. You know, I can create these worlds however I want. Put all the stupid references in that I want. True, and you can put so many that most of them never even get found, and you have to found, and you have to live with that, and you have to live with the pain <laughs> of not not having that really cool thing be found. I think that's the biggest pain of being a DM is just being like, why didn't they look under the table? <laughs> well, like, but then you have to think as like the as like a player it's like well why would i look under the table it's like 
You can't be like, there's a switch under the table, and if you press it, then the, the bookshelf opens, and the floor opens, and there's, like, a portal reference. <laughs> I'm like, I'm either, like, it's, like, clearly transparently a reference, or it's, like, too vague or subtle yeah. or, or specific. Yeah. Some Sometimes I just have really specific, like, from a game no one's played from 20 years ago. <laughs> you know, just whatever. <laughs> But yeah, it's yeah the pain of the pain of not being able to share your secrets is as tough as it is. <laughs> so, Very hard. That's okay. I talk to my people. I have friends that aren't you know that aren't you guys. Whoa, shocker! Wow, <laughs> that's <laughs> huge news, bro. Congrats. So I tell them about it. <laughs> Important on that one. <laughs> shout, shout out to Ed Boy and Scott. Um, so, uh, well, getting I guess getting back on topic. I know we've just been kind of rambling on a bit. Um, I also uh, wanted to ask, like, is there anything that you want to, like, any secrets you want to... Speaking of secrets, actually, segue, speaking of secrets, is there anything you want to tell us about Boldgrave that maybe hasn't come up? Or, um, you know, if there's something in his backstory that you think needs to be... Because, like, obviously, you, you and I tell each yeah. other all kinds of stuff so i know i know your your whole lore but um is there anything you'd like to share that just hasn't come up in a session um i think that the destruction of cantonica is something that is going to be a, a bigger problem later on than it is right now just because uh obviously like that's his home world and like uh it's one of those things where it's like you know he's in this like club and then like the pikes are rushing in there's like three out of like his top five biggest nemesis and like one building and like it's been like crazy like that ever since the planet blew up but i genuinely think that there's a storm welling itself right now but it's not going to be held back for much longer inside of bold grave and it's kind of leaking out a little bit like with seeing these things from his past but he still hasn't mourned yet like he hasn't had time to mourn the death of his father he hasn't had time to mourn the death of his planet and all the friends he had there you know and uh also like the whole betrayal of kira and everything like he doesn't have time to like mourn he's still fighting uh and so yeah he's just kind of focused on the fight right now he doesn't have time to actually deal with anything but when he does have time it's probably going to be like a really big problem for the rest of the party like it tends to be <laughs> uh yeah well, I, I i i can definitely appreciate how uh how vulnerable that arc was for you and I, I did my best to you know try to be respectful of your boundaries during that whole mm. that whole thing but um i don't yeah i don't i don't know how much the rest of the party realized how like intimate of a moment that was um, yeah, i don't know it was rough for Boldgrave though he was uh struggling uh he's still uh yeah he's still i that's his biggest thing is like that lead he got about where his family was taken after they were separated. So for him, he's going to be on that trail, whether or not the party comes with him. Yeah. It's on the other side of the galaxy. So yeah. guess we'll see. Yeah. It's very far away, but maybe that'll be good. You know, there's like an alien threat and certainly not the side of the galaxy. I'll want to be on. I'm sure <laughs> if that pops up again. <laughs> <clears throat> well, okay. That's yeah, definitely. Um, something to consider i uh hopefully hopefully things hopefully y'all can part amicably if you do have to part <laughs> ways i know it's there's been some tension in the past but i don't know Al so alliances we'll are shifting again so we'll see uh alliances are constantly uh, within the party like not necessarily switching up but like you know the lines are getting blurred a little bit as time goes on as people do crazy things. Um, yeah, it, it's been difficult because, like, faction faction play is something that I've always really liked on, like, on paper at least. I always think it sounds so interesting. 
but then when like every player has a different faction kind of pulling them in different directions it's very hard to keep the like the player faction so to speak as a yeah. cohesive unit yeah, you, 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 <laughs> yeah, really, you really gotta go like true. big with like hey this threat is bigger than all of these factions combined you know gotta you gotta unite under a really big cause and either the cause is either something in your backstory or something that like threatens everything in a way it's true or threatens at least it's multiple true. of the factions enough of the factions yeah. so that way over right. time those conflicts build the trust and the friendship within the group so when the factions are added again there's a different there's more um you know the players kind of create their own pseudo faction in a sense right that's that's what you're trying to build so that you can leverage that against the individual factions and uneasy alliances <laughs> exactly and right now everybody's you... still kind of in their faction so it's been uh, an interesting experience what are you saying Jama? did you did you learn that from like uh like brandon sanderson's writing lectures or learn what the whole like thing you're talking about about like the different factions having to have a common threat and then like kind of like making it bigger than the rest of the groups or is that something you just kind of picked up from your your uh like gaming experience that, that's a personal experience is that what he talks nice. about it was talking about factions in one of his podcasts not too long ago. Brandon Sanderson's an excellent author, for those of you guys who don't know. He writes a lot of really good modern literature, a modern fantasy literature. Um, Stormlight Archives is what I'm reading now. It's super good. Definitely check it out. Um, but no, yeah, he uh, he was talking about factions and essentially how like you can have multiple characters being in different factions and there's two ways to do it you give a larger threat that unites all of the different factions which allows the people to be a cohesive party or you make it so the party with the involved people and their club so to speak has more weight than the rest of the factions so then they become dependent on that and then they're still pulled in different directions but then they can decide as a group what direction they go in yeah, if the, if the party members are in uh, indispensable to their factions, then the, the, the player group becomes more important than the faction itself. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> well, when we were talking about Martin earlier, um, I, I definitely think that was what, you know, uh, obviously the, the show is what it is, but uh, that was kind of the same thing they were going for with like the White Walkers. So like, mm -hmm. to me, this, you know, this alien invasion is very much the White Walkers. It's this impending doom that if these factions can't get their shit together and figure out how they can work together, then, <clears throat> you know, they're going to roll through the galaxy and tough, tough cookies. <laughs> yeah. Somebody call Luke. Somebody call the Jedi. <laughs> yeah, for real. For real. Well, uh, you know, Luke can Luke can kill an emperor, but can he kill a whole army? Uh, Luke couldn't even kill an emperor, speak. so I mean, <laughs> uh, technically, yeah, technically, it was Anakin. It wasn't. To be fair, <laughs> he got trained by two people who didn't tell him that they used lightning when they've been fighting them using lightning the entire time they've known these enemies. <laughs> like that's like, <laughs> and well, someone into Luke a gunfight kept... with a knife and no vest. <laughs> Luke kept like... leaving his training early. He's like, "Sorry, I gotta go." And Yoda's looking at this little booklet like force lightning dark side techniques and he's like no you should really stay Luke he's like nope I'm like oh man I told him he wasn't ready I told him he wasn't ready listen, it was literally in the like, listen, next module Luke, Luke used that talk no jutsu okay he, he used the ultimate technique the ultimate voice power yeah <laughs> It's, well, it's cool though cause like you can see Luke kind of try to deflect the force lightning using the force and it's like, he was intuitive enough to realize, hey, this is the force. This isn't just lightning, sh like, frying me right now. Yeah, he kind of grabs it with his saber, right? It, like, he kind of, like, tries he, to... When he's getting electrocuted, you see him go like this. And it kind of, like, pushes back a little bit. But it's wrapped him up so much that he can't really do anything. So he just succumbs. But okay. it's, like, it's a brief moment of, like, showing that, like, oh, he can feel the force inside of it. And he's really feeling it now. But... <laughs> It's just kind of like he got jumped into the Jedi Order. <laughs> That's yeah. what yeah. it was. <laughs> yes, very, very much that classic fantasy trope of um, jumping in your under... homies. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Java, jumping in your homies. <laughs> <laughs> uh... 
Well, speaking of jumping into your homies, what is uh, what is the plans for the future for Boldgrave, Brennan, Bloodline, uh, all of all of the names? <laughs> I mean, for Brennan, uh, Boldgrave, Bloodline, Otoil, I don't know. It's really just him, like a trying to get drunk, and b him killing everyone who's caused him trouble, and then c finding his. Uh, wife and child um it was probably definitely not a child any other grown-ass adult but like it's just sort of like getting that reunion um and then there's like some other miscellaneous things on the list as it as happens with adventures but like those are his priorities those are like his big three any plans for revenge there are, there are certainly kira and there certainly have been a few uh betrayals on to done to you you'll have to watch and find out Ooh, okay i've got a, i've got a quick <laughs> i've got a quick question this is for boldgrave or for jama yeah. um how did you slash boldgrave because i'm not sure if boldgrave has acknowledged it yet feel when you found out that your child was also force sensitive uh <clears throat> i know boldgrave hasn't completely I... like made that connection i think or hasn't really, I like... think that as as Jama, it makes it makes Jama worried that his son or might be stronger than him and he might not be an ally. But as Brennan, he doesn't acknowledge it. He's pretending it's not there. Like he doesn't. Brennan's literally the person. He's mastered the art of not worrying about things he cannot control. Like if it's something that he cannot control, if he took anything away from his bunk training, it's that he does not worry about things that he doesn't have a say over. Which is why he takes the ship so seriously. That makes sense. So, as far as he doesn't, he's really, as far as like having a force sensitive child, he only acknowledges that he has a child. Right, because that you have control over. Yeah. We, we could all take a page out of his book on that. That's beautifully put. Akuna Matata, you know, you gotta. Yeah, you control <laughs> it, you know, no you, sense. You've gotta learn what's in your control. <laughs> ain't nothing that a beer can fix. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing I can wash away. <laughs> is that is that Boldgrave's theme song or what? <laughs> Actually, you know, his theme song is uh, Gold Lion by the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good song. It's definitely Very his nice. uh, his uh, listening to in the locker room song. His uh, his walking out music. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, it's, uh, it's for approaching any, for any okay. DMs out there. Oh, I was just gonna say for any DMs out there, that's a great little exercise. Uh, ask your ask your players what their character's theme song is. I think that's a a fun little exercise. <laughs> nice. I was just gonna okay, say go we're almost an hour in, so if we want to hit the next uh, few things on the agenda list of uh, yeah. Points. So um, so that was kind of our main our main topic. Um, we also you know this trying to be kind of a variety podcast for you know anyone who for whatever reason is watching us and doesn't watch our uh, campaign. Uh, we got some other stuff we want to talk about. So uh, there's uh, always new trailers and stuff dropping, always stuff to look forward to. So um, what are you guys excited for for uh, December? The month ahead has got some How couple of big I'm releases. How going to be? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I'm just excited uh, to play Star Wars again like... next week. Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes that's, and... that's huge. <laughs> huge. It's going to be huge huge yeah I've, uh, yeah we'll, we'll, we have a few announcements uh that i'll i'll drop at the end of the, the podcast for our upcoming schedule i guess i was more talking about like are there any like movies tv shows books video games anything like releasing soon i don't even know what's coming out for? soon honestly i've been playing pokemon and that's about and uh, that's about it and watching anime that's that's been my time there is like a pretty cool uh i know you guys we've talked about it off stream but uh, Jason David Frank passing, and for the month of December, there's been a charity that started in his name, uh, may you rest in peace, but like, it's called Ranger Reach Out, 
and it's a very very cool uh fan-based organization that's been founded and essentially what they do is like it's for anyone who's in the power ranger community or outside of it like even people who have like acted as rangers and things like that are involved with it and it's basically a community resource program where you can like message like the organization and then like they'll have someone call you if you need someone to talk to and things like that and it's basically like a suicide prevention awareness uh depression depression coping uh sort of system and it, it's really cool and it just sprung up overnight and it's been growing rapidly uh as far as like december i think that they have like a few events that they're planning to do like uh and i think it's based in texas which is where uh uh jdf lived uh but yeah, no, like, uh, that's something that I think is really cool that's happening. Oh. Yeah, that's, well, that's exciting, cool. man. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah, um, yeah RIP and also RIP Kevin Conroy, too. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, that's awful. Super sad. It's it's, it's a rough uh, roll, roll of three. There's going to be one, there's one more celebrity soon. Oh, no. I, oh, no. I can't deal with the third one, man. <laughs> My child is certain. But, uh, yeah, no, like, uh, it's it's super tough and uh it's usually this time of the year where people feel the most overwhelmed but like if you feel like you're overwhelmed or you feel like you have no other options there's always another option there's always someone to talk to please reach out to the people you care about who care about you and remember to tell someone you love them because it's always nice to hear it back and you know sometimes it's nice to just say it you know, keep doing kind things, keep loving yourself, and keep being a great person. Uh, and remember, you're valuable and you're worth it. And if you've got any quiet homies that uh, you haven't heard from them in a while, you know, check in on them, see how they're Hell doing. Yeah, checking on the homies. W wish them, wish them a happy holiday, and, and see, uh, see what they're up to. Just, just a little, a little kindness goes a long way. For sure. Well. I feel silly talking about what I was going to talk about now. I <laughs> no, think Avatar no, no. Way of Water looks cool. James <laughs> <laughs> Cameron coming in hot, baby. <laughs> Avatar, the most forgettable landmark series uh, in in existence. I, I don't know Avatar what, 2, 3, 4, 5 happened. to be equally forgettable. Did you know uh, there's a whole fucking theme park at Disneyland dedicated yeah, to Avatar? Yeah. I yeah. found I found this out like the past couple weeks. I, I didn't know about that. I was just like, why? Like it's so it's a weird. Thing. It's a thing. And the but, visuals uh, are stunning. Yeah, that, <laughs> like, that, that trailer looks mint. I mean it's like it's a cool like story. I mean it's definitely like a relatable like theme feels name great. Three like, characters from uh, Avatar. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's like, Jake I've been recently. Okay, you, you've already beat me. <laughs> Natiri is the main chick. Oh, and man. then... Somebody's been doing the research. Oh, fuck. There's, there's, oh, there's, there's, there's Michelle Rodriguez. There's a Stephen <laughs> Lee. I, <Yeah>. think. What's... <laughs> I was trying to think of the doctor. Is that Sigourney Reva that plays the doctor? Or is it somebody uh, else? Is it? No, I, I don't remember. Is she in that? I can't remember. I, don't remember. I, I thought For, she. I thought she played the doctor lady that was like. Maybe Disney Plus was the, the first pod. Avatar movie on there. On on. Yeah, I think it's on there. It's on there. Yeah, it's like for me though. Like I find it so strange how hugely successful the first Avatar film was because the visuals are stunning. But I feel like people were so busy looking at how pretty the movie looked that they missed the plot completely. Like well, they the missed thing is, the, like, plot, the plot. The plot wasn't like anything it was a pretty Wasn't standard thick. plot yeah it was a pretty standard plot yeah. it's just kind of generic yeah. yeah yeah it was just done in, a, in a, an insanely gorgeous setting on pandora way yeah, yeah. And so it was very I mean, so it was like, like why do i need to like pay attention to the plot like i've got like michelle Rodriguez yeah, exactly and that's and, like, that's how like 10 year old me felt yeah i was <laughs> like i'm just i just want to look at the cool blue people like <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it is Sigourney Weaver, and it's Dr. Grace. Dude, I was right there. I oh, almost had so it. Cool. That's close to greatness. Yeah. Did you know the fucking, the general, like, the evil general guy? His name is Colonel Miles Quaritch? I never fucking, <laughs> I, you, you put a gun to my head, I never would have guessed that. <laughs> you put a gun to my head, I can't even, I can't even tell you the plot. <laughs> can't even remember <laughs> the, well, I don't know, I, I, I thought it was me. like a cool, it definitely felt very reminiscent of like, um, 
like Native Americans and like yeah, the, co yeah. the colonizers coming to take the resources. It's like definitely, was, yeah, it's definitely the very, it's definitely the very classic the like man meets native, falls in love with native culture, fights back against his original people, like trope, against Pocahontas. oppressive regime. Yeah, exactly. Very very standard um, story. So I just hope that this next movie. I think the biggest like misstep was not doing more world building. And like, I know we like, obviously there's only so much time, like you need to focus on the main action, but I don't know. It just felt like I wanted to know more about like earth in that universe and like more about the company. And like, I don't know. There's just like, I felt like there was so much left unsaid about the, the greater world of the universe. Maybe, like, or maybe the, we'll rewatch it, it. So focused on the main plot. Yeah. Maybe we'll rewatch it and be like, oh, wait a second, it all was here. I just missed it the first time. <laughs> because there's other <laughs> things to focus missed. on. Yeah, I mean, we live in a world of content. Like we live in a world of tie-ins. Like it's at this point in 2022, as of 11 27 2022, it is impossible to consume all of the media that is available. It is impossible because there's more content being made every second. So, like, why shouldn't you, if you have a multi-billion dollar production, have, like, access to a fucking comic book tie-in? Why not? Why not? A, sh a light novel. Why not? Tell me why not. I'd read it. Because you don't care. They don't care. They just want to make their bank. They want to make their movie. They want to win their awards. And then they're going to pack it in for another 10 years it was such a visual i mean he really made it a visual experience and yeah, yeah. he was yeah. trying to advance that technology i mean it basically paved the way for modern 3d as we know it so that's so maybe, we something, just have I guess. To, maybe we have to go to <laughs> disney to find the lore yeah, <laughs> the lore yeah. no dude okay so i don't know if anybody <laughs> has ever watched jenny nicholson's channel she's a youtuber she I does these know. extensive deep dives into the weirdest, most obscure subjects. So th this is how I found out was she uh, she went to this Avatar world and, and did like an hour long video talking about the like what she experienced. And it's like it's fucking uncanny because like they're like in, they're like pictures everywhere of like mm -hmm. the natives like shaking hands with the humans and like, oh, like, you know, all that shit went down like we're friends now. But like there are no actors that are in the costumes. Oh, so it's really? just like, what happened to them? <laughs> Where are they? That's funny. That's <laughs> so weird. It's a, it's a it's, conspiracy. It's a trip. It's, it's, <laughs> dude, it felt, it felt like there was like something sinister being covered up. It almost like it was just like a propaganda are... theme park. <laughs> like everything happened totally fine on Pandora. We are best friends. Yeah. <laughs> There is no war in Bossing Say. Oh, that's exactly it. There's no war in Bossing Say. There's no war when you're in the heart of Nazi Germany in 1941 either. Uh, so, anyways, it's it's crazy. Um, but um, yeah, so that's what I'm looking forward to in December. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, I did watch Black Panther in 3D, by the way, and oh, I don't know if it made a difference, but it was pretty cool. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen it yet. I did watch Black Adam though. That was oh. pretty good. I haven't, haven't seen it yet. But I, I, I've, I have seen both of those, and they are good and bad for different reasons. Oh, I agree. Black Adam had its weaknesses, but it was yeah. like a super, super solid film. Yeah, it was definitely. Yeah, Black it was definitely wasn't, like a, certainly wasn't perfect. <laughs> what's it called? Yeah, Black Adam was a superhero, like just like oh, movie through and through. Yeah, it it was like it wasn't yeah. trying to be anything. Not it was just like we were just we're just superheroes doing superhero things and. Yep, it was like, we made a superhero movie, here's a big bad threat, we gotta stop, and here's a confused anti-hero, and he's gonna try and do his best, because he has an attachment to these humans. Yep. Hawkman was pretty dope. Uh, Hawkman was sick, I Hawk gotta Man be honest. I, I, he, they did him so much justice. They they, re they really did. Doctor Fate was pretty- I really, Doctor I really Fate liked, was so good too! I loved his animation, his like, his magic animations. Yeah, I dude. was like, bro! I need to see more of this. I better see. I mean, I guess we can always can see it again, right? It yeah. just depends on where the hell. I was. Spoiler. I right. was afraid that Doctor Fate's like graphic design stuff was gonna come across as like decaf Doctor Strange. Right. But like, it was totally unique to like the franchise. Like right. even the way the magic looked, the the way it sounded. I heard somebody way, say like, it was like decaf Doctor Strange or something like that. But when I was watching it, I was like, I don't really like get that vibe at all like it feels unique. not at all no 
it was totally unique. And that's like for me, like I don't know, I geek out the way like to me. All right, I'm about to ramble, so I'm gonna make it quick. But, like, <laughs> this is now a Black Adam podcast. <laughs> full of a Mag- no, it's a Doctor Fate. <laughs> Magic in. Okay. Magic in film, right? Like, okay. The way, cause magic's not real, right? Let me preface that. It's so hard to Allegedly. make. <laughs> it's so hard to make magic feel real and to make people suspend their disbelief when they're fucking watching magic on film. So the way it sounds, the way it interacts with the environment, the consistency of the way it binds itself to that world's physics, all of those things have to make sense. And, like, that's what makes Doctor Strange's magic so good, because it does the same things over and over and over again, so you believe it. It works the same way over and over again. Harry Potter magic is the same way. It, it's consistent. It builds so, like, on a foundation of, like, there are rules to it. Exactly, there's rules to it, and you can kind of see the rules without being told the rules. And so, like, what that's what I was looking for with Doctor Fate's magic, and it does the same thing. I was really impressed. But the problem is, is, like, because it's a superhero doing magic, it's almost dangerous like you could almost fall into that trope of accidentally borrowing too much from the other franchise but they didn't do that at all and like i I was impressed with that yeah that's exciting that was honestly the character i was most like excited for in that movie um i I haven't seen black adam yet but i'm that's definitely pierce brosnan was actually it was a pretty solid doctor doctor fate hawk like said hawkman yeah hawk hawkman was superb it captured all of his like skill and ferocity and also like sense of justice all in like one character he looked dope yeah true blue paladin (laughs) (laughs) well i'm excited for a good a good superhero romp because while i did really enjoy black panther and it was a very like deep and emotional experience for me certainly isn't a superhero movie. (laughs) (laughs) i mean there is like some superhero stuff that happens but it yeah it's like the story. definition of, yeah the definition of what a superhero movie is has has shifted a bit uh in the modern in the modern day black at black adam goes to the roots of what a superhero movie is and it beats you over the head with what it is because it knows exactly what it is we were talking about yeah. the other day like when something knows what it is that inherently makes it easy to digest and easy to enjoy without being too critical of it because it's giving you what you expect Right, it's not trying to be something it's not. So there's like you can't really critique it on that. Yeah, what's it? And that's yeah. exactly. It's like like uh, it Dwayne Johnson knew exactly what he was doing when he made the movie, and he was like, mm-hmm. "I'm not going to. Also, there's no reason to like. Yeah, there's no reason to like not do this." He's like, "I know what I, I am. I know what this is. I'm just gonna do it." Yeah, and him as Black Adam is perfect casting. Well, that's good. DC the the DC movies I've enjoyed the most are when they just pick pick a very specific direction and just kind of go with it yeah. it's the movies that they try to do too much that i think gets a little too yeah. watered down yeah well i, I feel yeah. well that's that I, I have different opinions on that but i feel like those i know we're always referencing the Zack snyder ones but i know the studio gets way too involved and i know that causes issues of course but, the, when, but when it's a simple like... superhero novel like you know the first wonder woman movie and the black adam movie Yes. Some of like the Suicide Squad movies, they're all very linear. And and I, and I think the studios um, kind of gave them more free reign. Maybe they learned their lessons, but but then the Ayer got, Ayer really cut got chopped up by the studio. <laughs> and that's which um, is, you know, it's, it's once again points back to the studio not knowing what they're doing and not giving the directors enough free reign. But... Mm-hmm. It's it's tough, man. They've got a lot of money invested in it, so it's it's very easy as a fan to get frustrated with studios. But like, they're fronting millions of dollars to oh, make this exactly. happen. That's what so I was like, gonna say. yeah, like, <laughs> you, you it, can't just not let them have any input. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, like if I if that's like being like I gave you five hundred thousand dollars to make like this one episode of The Sopranos remake. And you're going to tell me that you're going to have a skinny Tony Soprano. Absolutely not. <laughs> he needs to be on the verge of heart disease or we're not doing this. Like, I want to see him sweating gobble I need, Yeah, exactly. I need to see a plate of gobble ghoul on his nightstand in the first five minutes. This isn't happening. <laughs> uh. Oh, boy. 
Well, I guess um, before we wrap things up here, uh, what's what's everybody been watching, reading, playing currently? Uh, Kyle, I think you said you're playing Pokemon right now. Yep, I'm still playing Pokemon Scarlet. Actually, I'm not still playing because it came out between the last podcast and now, but I've been playing Pokemon Scarlet. Um, I have still playing Marvel Snap. And my yeah, I was gonna say I've been I've been playing a lot of Snap. Recently. I gotta start because like you guys have made it sound so good. It's such a nice clean game um the events are garbage but but that's a different conversation um it's entirely optional yeah basically it's like uh, the events page is like off on the side somewhere that you won't even know about unless you actively search for it or somebody tells you about it and now that i know to look there for events i know to check in every once in a while on it but i'm just like bro just put it on the opening banner or, or a little like button there but other than that, that's not a big deal because you don't, the rewards you get from it aren't even like worth the trouble doing it anyway. So it's kind of like purely optional. Um, but that aside, I, other than that, Battle everything stress me out. What's it called? <laughs> everything about the game is like like a plus, pretty much. Um, really enjoy it. Um, my guilty pleasure is still the uh, the Titans on HBO Max. Uh, started a couple weeks ago. You should feel very guilty about that, uh, actually. I, I, I think they're on season I won't shame four. you, but... I think, on, I think they're on season... <laughs> it's, it's really weird. So, like, I lo- one of the reasons I like it is because it is, like, unfiltered dark. Like, uh, like they don't hold anything back in terms of just, like, the classic, like, dark... Um, I don't know what the, the exact genre is called type, but it's just, like... Um, edgy teenagers kind of noir yeah, like, like yeah it's just it's it's yeah it's like the, um it's like rated it's like rated r content the like the entire almost the entire nice. time um what's it called and sometimes the real dark like dark genre type is really good and it's like really intense and sometimes it can be a little cringy um but that's but that's kind of that's kind of yeah that's, that's kind of the line you walk when you're gonna do this like architect this thing and so sometimes I'm like all in and sometimes it's like that was a little cringe but all in all I just like having like a team I like this like dark real um, like live action um, like Titans uh, TV show and um, it, it feels really good once you like get past some of the well some I've of the always stuff. known you. would I've always known you to be like a CW diehard. I mean, yeah. didn't you have like a fucking cardboard cutout at one point? <laughs> I, well, it's not CW, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I did have a cutout you... of um, Arrow and Canary from the original Arrowverse. <laughs> Still do somewhere. Well, the well the, the DC, sorry, yeah. like the DC TV shows. I, I don't know. What yeah, yeah I, I enjoy it. You, you know what I was trying to say. Yeah, ever since Arrow, <laughs> Arrow ended, I haven't really like been keeping up on like the Flash and stuff and all that stuff because Arrow really felt, I don't know. I really enjoyed the Arrow series. It has its up and down, so, but I enjoyed it. Um, same thing. I, I, mean, I can I can, I can deal with some like bad TV if it's just like, you know, temporary, you know, because TV shows, you're putting out so much content, like you're going to have bad moments you know and if you're and like and if you're sitting here and be like well this got really bad well like yeah of course it did there's but they're putting out 20 episodes a season like what do you expect yeah expect and you have like the constant rotation and like the direction of the projects and stuff like that because you have a different director every episode right exactly that's why good things like swamp thing if you haven't seen the swamp thing tv show um the swamp thing tv show i didn't even know there was one oh my (laughs) god dude it is great it got it got it got shortened a little bit because they were promised tax breaks for working in a location that they like didn't end up getting so they couldn't make it like the full length season like 12 episodes i think they wanted i think they shortened for like eight or ten um because all of a sudden it was costing them way more money per episode um but Mm. um it's still really good um it's definitely like the swamp thing like kind of like i mean if you know swamp thing you pretty much know what you're getting but i definitely recommend it it's it's either on hbo it's on c i know it's on cw i'm not sure I imagine it's on HBO Max because all the DC shows I think are on HBO Max. But I highly yeah, recommend yeah. uh, highly recommend you checking out Swamp Thing if you haven't already. It came out like probably like four years ago now, honestly. But oh wow, okay, yeah, um, no, I didn't know it existed. Um, yeah, it's super good. Recommend. Uh, um, 
That's uh... the ocean of content, eh, Jama? <laughs> I was just saying it, man. Like, there's way too much shit coming out at one time for you to even notice it. Yeah. Like, there's stuff from years ago you can catch up on, like Peaky Blinders. But yeah. like, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's... yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, it's so like trying to like go back and watch something that's like you know is good, but it's like. Yeah. Fuck, there's well, like three new seasons yeah. of other stuff. I'm yeah. Well, luckily, Swamp Thing's only like uh, one season and it's only like eight episodes. So it's really like. Uh, uh, so it's I like. I can appreciate that. Yeah, it's a, it's a little like. Uh, it's a little like Constantine. But like. Also that show is so good. fucking good. Constantine was, pre- Constantine was pretty good. I don't know if I've ever got the chance to like finish it, finish it, but I remember what I did watch. It got. It like basically like ended in the middle of a season. Yeah, it was pretty I see, bad. I see. Uh, I see on the Twitch stream here we got uh, seven viewers. So just want to say what's up, everybody. Uh, do we have any? Do we? Do we want to uh, take any questions about? Um, I mean, really anything. Just uh, our main topic today. We were talking about Jama's character. If anyone who just uh, arrived. Oh man! As soon as I said that, it dropped down to five. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> There's a 30 second delay, so they left before you said anything. If that makes you feel better. Okay, I was just like, oof. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, yeah. If anybody has any questions, our, our main topic today was uh, Jama's character, or if you just uh, movie, comics, TVs about us personally, and any of that is all free game. Feel free to drop a question in the chat. Or this is. We, I, it's harder for us to interact while we're playing D&D with the actual live chat, but this is definitely your opportunity to uh, to shout out uh, questions or anything to us. So, uh, okay, I went back up to seven. All right, we're cool. Okay, uh, Foxley16 asks, any idea on when either the next session or a one-shot will be streamed? Um, so I was, I was going to kind of say this as we were wrapping up, but I guess I'll go ahead and say it now. So uh, next, the plan as of right now, assuming nothing goes wrong um next week we are going to return to star wars 5e we'll be playing that a new campaign um next week and then the following week let's open my notes here um so star wars next week that's the fourth uh december 4th uh following week uh we're gonna do the podcast again um haven't locked down on who the guest will be but ideally i'm gonna get another one of the players on and me and kyle can uh talk with them a bit like we did today with jama um then we are planning a we have a annual christmas one shot that we do every year uh so that'll be december 18th um that's a week before christmas we're gonna take christmas is a sunday so we're gonna take christmas and um the first uh new year's off and then sometime in january either the 8th which is you know the second week of january or the 15th we are starting a mini series that i have been planning and it is set in the world of theros which is a greek odyssey inspired setting um for anyone who plays magic the gathering uh it was <laughs> it was uh there was a, a couple of sets um that are set in this in this uh version of the multiverse that's it's like greek gods and heroes and um it's a it's a real good time we played as jama said we we played a campaign for actually like close to a year oh that was that. the first time i played with these guys actually that was the oh. that was the campaign that started everything for us and uh, just like how you see rain and bold grave now how we have like this really like romantic relationship it's like it was the same thing in that last campaign so it's just broke now <laughs> times, like, times 10 i <laughs> thought you guys were gonna be lovers in the other campaign <laughs> I, we were literally soaking our feet in a little pond of water that I made, like with my little turtle child swimming around in it. Like. What's it called? Well, listen, listen. It's really funny because both both my character and Jama's character, we like we create our characters without like really like knowing who the other person was. Um, and so yeah. both of us um, worshipped, effectively worshipped two gods, but the one god. But we both drew our powers from the god we didn't have in common. So both of us were bound by yeah. Thassa, uh, like emotionally, culturally, and all that stuff. Which, cr- but neither one of because us worshipped the Thassa goddess of the ocean. ocean, and neither one of us worshipped 
her as the source of our powers. So it created this like really just like unique community like, bonding yeah. uh, situation. And both of us were just like, he was a full paladin. I was a cleric storm sorcerer. So I was kind of like, which was basically just like a paladin with, with low HP. Uh, <laughs> a paladin with <laughs> extra stats. Yeah, paladin with, with less spice slot. Right, like yeah, had, less might slots, more spell <laughs> slots. What's it called? Right. So, so in other words, we, we both kind of fulfilled the same like role, this like combative role, but with both this like high respect for Thassa, but with both our own like path, and it was just like we just kind of um had a lot in common. We also loved hitting things really hard. Yes. Oh, because of the doesn't. heroic short, the heroic short, short rest. rest. Yeah. So we would get all our like spell slots and everything back off of like a ten minute break. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it was like an yeah. hour for a long rest or five minutes for a short fight. rest. So it was just, yeah. just sit down and drink a Gatorade and start casting <laughs> daily level uh, powers again. <laughs> uh, my campaign was insane, dude. Our characters were so overpowered. <laughs> yeah, I, be I, I believe we are going to be doing heroic short resting uh, for the one shot as well What's oh my called? god yeah so, i'm still i'm still i'm still not sure who i'm gonna be playing but it might be a minotaur ranger with a boar companion that's the leading that'd uh, be cool that'd that's, be cool that's 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 my leading character until uh, unless something else like comes up then uh i've been plotting and uh spending spending some time working on this um while i've had some downtime with since we've been kind of taking a, a little bit of a break so I, that's what i've been spending my time prepping I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys enjoy it, but because I've really enjoyed planning it. <laughs> oh, uh, Drum Sniper asked, uh, "What is Boldgrave's number one favorite alcoholic beverage?" Uh whiskey. Just great, plain and simple. Uh, he he loves his dark liquors, and he will drink a bottle of brown any time of the week. Top shelf, bottom shelf. Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't whichever matter. whichever one he can reach. Be in the bottom of a bin with the stiff left. <laughs> He'll still be there. Whichever one he can grab without the bartender seeing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Good stuff. Hell yeah. Um, okay, well, I guess if that wraps up questions. Yeah, I was just going to um, say our schedule, but I've already done that. So, yeah, I guess that's about it. Um we have anything else you want to talk about before we go? Uh, nope, just excited thank for next you, week. everyone, for tuning Beautiful in. Nerds. Hope to see you all um, here next yeah. week at, it'll be 5 o'clock Central, uh, 6 o'clock Eastern. If you're in another time zone, good luck. Do the math. <laughs> Google is your friend. Google. If you're in another yeah, time Google zone, it's an hour and a half from right now. Yeah. Next week. Um, yeah. Yeah, and just thanks, thanks everyone for tuning in. And uh, if we don't see you again, have a happy holiday season, and we appreciate you guys. Thank, Thank you for so joining much. us, Chama. Of course, it's a pleasure, boys. Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty. Till next time. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. <laughs>